Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome, it is great to have you. If you're a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. You can also find a link in the description below to all of my playlists, basically a table of contents. And of course, please hit subscribe and click the bell notification if you haven't already. So now that we're introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So in this video, we will continue our discussion of model building and more specifically the general linear model or the GLM. And in this video, we will continue from where we left off in the last video where we looked at a technique called effect coding in ANOVA. In this video, we will look at effect coding in ANCOVA and then translate that over to regression and do sort of the same things we did in Excel. So let's go ahead and get to work. So a quick overview if you haven't watched that first video, but I do recommend you go back and watch it. So when moving from ANOVA or ANCOVA to regression, under the GLM, we usually code one variable as all zeros. The all zero group is often a base, reference, or control group. However, not all situations have such a group. Another way of coding the independent variables of that group is called effect coding, and there are other ways to do that as well. So instead of zeros, the levels of one variable are all assigned negative ones instead of zeros, and the reference group is the grand mean instead of one of the other levels. So this has interesting implications that can also help us interpret our results. And like I said, I actually like this way a bit better when it comes to the interpretation aspect. So let's go ahead and hop into Excel and see how this works in ANCOVA. And just a reminder, if you look in the description, you can find a link to a file you can download and follow along if you like. So let's go ahead and get to work. So in this example, we're gonna take some shortcuts just to save some time, but we're gonna do the same process with ANCOVA. So we're gonna add a covariate. So here in the stacked columns, you can see that we now have a quantitative covariate called GPA, which is just the GPA for each student that matches their year, and then of course their overall study skills score. So over here in the middle, we have our traditional dummy coding, and again, we do the exact same thing. To make it easier on myself, I'm just gonna grab those zeros, paste it, and then move it over. And then for the effect coding, it's all negative ones. Same thing we did in the previous example. So we'll copy those over, and we would code it the exact same way. Instead of using two zeros for year one and year two, we would use negative one for year one in year two. And to save time, I'm going to hop over to another tab in the spreadsheet that has all of the analysis already done, and then we'll compare the coefficients in that example. Okay, so here we are in the output for the ANCOVA example. So the first thing I want to do is draw your attention to this green box up here at the top. And I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can see it. Okay, so what I did here was some summary statistics based off the data. We already did this for year one, year two, and year three, the mean scores. Also went ahead and did a GPA average for the three groups. So 3.12375 is the average GPA for all the students in year one, right here. 2.99 approximately is the average GPA for all the students in year two. And then 3.06875 for year three. And then the grand or the overall GPA is just the mean of all the GPA is combined. And then we'll get to this column R here in a second. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of point out where our output is. So let me scroll over a little bit. So here we have the output for the dummy coding. This is our regression output using the same method we did uh, in the previous example. So we have our summary statistics, our omnibus ANOVA table, our coefficients, our model parameters, such as our coefficients and everything, and then down below that we actually have our residual. So we have our predicted scores, and of course the difference between the predicted and the observed is the residual. So that is for the dummy coding example. Now for the effect coding, that's over to the right. 
So I'll scroll over a little bit. So here we have the summary output, the ANOVA table, and then the model parameters, and of course the residuals. So look at this compared to the dummy coding example. Again, the summary statistics are all the same. So our R square, 0 0.5986, 0 0.5986, same thing over here, everything is the same. Our overall, our omnibus ANOVA table, everything is the same. So our sum of squares for regression, residual, all the same, mean square the same, our F is the same, and then our significance is the same. If we go down to our coefficients and our parameters table, they are very different. So here in our dummy coding example, the intercept coefficient is 31.68. However, in the effect coding output, it's 28.79. And we're gonna discuss why that is here um, in a minute. And of course, our other coefficients are also different. However, if we go down, again, the predicted scores and the residuals, all the same. The only difference between these two are the parameters. So the coefficients and p-values and so forth for those parameters. Now over to the right, I have the ANOVA or the ANCOVA output. Because remember, this is an ANCOVA. We have that covariate of GPA. So first, this looks a little bit different because this was used using an Excel add-in called Excel Stat, which I've used in previous videos in this playlist. But what we're interested in here is how it compares to the regression output. So it's in a little bit different order, but we can see that our R square 0.599 does the same thing we have over on the regression side, 0.599. And again, this is why we're doing this all in the GLM playlist, because this is all within the general linear model. And again, everything else is the same. Our root mean square error, 7.86. The output for Excel and the regression calls it the standard error. Those are the same thing, 7.86. Now we get onto our ANOVA table. Again, everything is the same. So our mean square regression, 614. Over here in the ANOVA table, 614. The mean square error, 61.786. 61.786 over here in the regression side, all the same. Now if I scroll down a little bit, we look at our model parameters. So the intercept is 31.68. Now where did we see that before? If we look at our coefficient for the effect coding, it's not the same, it's 28.79. However, if we go over to the traditional dummy coding, we can see that it's 31.68. So like I said, when you do ANOVA in Excel using the data analysis tool pack, or in this case, an Excel stat, it's gonna assume the traditional dummy coding with the zeros, not the effect coding with the negative ones. But again, it doesn't change the overall model. It just changed the relationship between the coefficients. But overall, the model's the exact same, the predictions are the exact same, everything else is the exact same. So how do we make sense of these coefficients? Let's go over back to the regression side. Let's put the ANOVA side there so you can actually see sort of where the numbers come from. So for now, we're gonna work right in this area of the spreadsheet. If we want to do a predicted score on the dummy coding side, we kind of already know how this works. It's the same basic idea. I'm going to scoot over a little bit more to get to my data here. There we go. Now, what if I wanted to reproduce this predicted score for this first student in year one, which is right here? So the model predicted a score of 72.476. The actual score was 82. So, of course, the difference is the residual which is 9.5237. So what would I do if I wanted to replicate this predicted score here? Well, I would just use my coefficients up here in the parameter table. So to do that, it just equals the intercept plus, now remember this is a year one student, so it's one times the year one coefficient plus zero times the year two coefficient. Now what about the GPA? So plus GPA right here times the GPA for that student. And I get 72.4763. See how that works? Now I could do that for all of the other students to get the predicted scores, but I just want you to see how it works in general. Now what about over here in the effect coding? Same basic idea, but we gotta be a little bit careful in how we do this. So let's do this the same way. So it equals, our coefficient for the intercept plus one times year one 
plus zero times year two plus GPA times that student's GPA equals, and we get 72.4763, the exact same thing. Now let me scroll down a little bit to a year three student. This is where things can get a little bit uh, weird and different. So let's say we wanna predict this score right here, so which is uh, the 64. So in our predicted scores, that's the 17th score because there's eight students in each group. So the first eight, second eight, will give us a 16. So 71.32, that is the first student in the third group. So to get this one in the dummy coding, same idea, equals coefficient plus, in this case, it's zero times year one plus zero times year two plus GPA times that student's GPA, which is 2.67 and we get 71.3287, which is the same thing over here. However, if I go over to the other side where we have our effect coding, find the same score, so 71.32 there, to repeat this, same basic idea, equals intercept, plus negative one times year one, plus negative one times year two, plus GPA times that student's GPA, which was 2.67, and we get 71.3287, the exact same. So even when we use the effect coding, the way the coefficients work and how we predict the score, it all works the exact same as long as we remember how we did our coding. So the last thing we'll talk about, and this is kind of the, I don't know, the fundamental point of this video and the GLM and how everything is related and different forms of coding is how do we get back to our group means that we started with? So way back at the beginning, we had group means for each year, one, two, and three, and then of course, eight scores in that year to give us our group means. But now we have this GPA covariate. So how does that play into how we get our original group means back? So first, let's look at the dummy example, which is here in the middle. How do we get back our 77.25, taking into account the GPA covariate? Well, the way we do that, and we're going to start here for a reason, is that remember that in this dummy example, everything is based off this year three because we have zero and zero dummy coded for that. So how do we get back to 77.25? Well, we go to our coefficient here, which is right here at the beginning, 31.68 plus, now remember it's coded zero, zero. So year one and year two do not factor into it. So plus, GPA times the mean GPA for that group, which is 3.06875, hit enter, 77.25. So we get that by using the mean GPA of that group. And then the rest of them work the exact same way. So for the dummy side, we wanna get the 70.75 back. So we have our coefficient plus one times year one, plus zero times year two coefficient plus GPA coefficient times, you guessed it, the mean GPA for year one, enter 70.75. And then finally, for the mean for year two, some idea, intercept plus zero times year one, because it's a year two mean, plus one times the year two coefficient, plus GPA times the mean GPA for that group, and we get 74.75, which is 74.75. Okay, so to get the grand mean back, a little convoluted, but just kind of follow along and see how it works. So to get this back, first thing we're gonna do is equals our coefficient plus our GPA coefficient times our overall GPA. Now what we have to do is account for the average deviation around our reference group. So here's our reference group, if everything else is set to zero. So the deviation from a reference group is zero, so we start with plus, and then zero, plus our coefficient for year one, plus our coefficient for year two, close, divide by three, because there are three measures there, enter, 74.25 which is our grand mean there.
Okay, so quickly over to the effect coding. Now it's called effect coding because it easily states the treatment effect for each group. And we can do that now because our base or reference is actually the grand mean because of the way we coded everything. And I will also point out that the treatment effects have to add to zero. So these right here. So remember, we're missing one treatment effect, but these have to add to zero. So the easiest thing to do is to find our grand mean in this case. So I'll go up to the effect column here. That is simply our intercept, so equals intercept plus our GPA times our overall GPA, 74.25. See, when we're using the grand mean as the reference group, I think, in my opinion, it makes things actually a little bit easier. Now, how about year one? Let's go up here to effect. So equals coefficient plus GPA times our overall GPA for that group plus one times the year one coefficient and we get 70.75. How about year two? Same basic process equals intercept plus GPA times our overall GPA for year two plus one times the year two coefficient or treatment effect. Enter. 74.75. Now for year three, remember we coded this with two negative ones. So equals coefficient plus GPA times overall GPA for year three plus negative one times year one plus negative one times year two, 77.25. Now I'll finish off here with a couple of interesting tidbits. Now there's a lot going on under the hood here. We could go for probably a couple of hours pointing out all the way these numbers are related. But the last thing I want to point out is the idea of the treatment effects and how they must sum to one and where this number appears over and over again. So if we go over to our effect coding, we can see that year one has a coefficient of negative 4.428, year two, 1.539, and so on and so forth. So those treatment effects must sum to zero. So we have a third variable here that's not present. So how do we figure out what that is? Well, if we take this negative four down here, let's pick a cell. So equals this value plus this value, we get negative 2.8886. So the treatment effect for your three has to be positive 2.8886 and so on and so forth. So those sum to zero. Now, where else does this number appear? Let's take a look. What about the coefficient over here and the coefficient over here? If I subtract those two, 2.8886, that's interesting. What about the difference between this coefficient, so the year one coefficient on the left, minus the year one coefficient over here on the right, 2.8886. What about the next coefficient? So equals year two over here, minus coefficient over on the right, 2.89, because it's gonna round. So as you can see, there are all kinds of interesting things going on under the hood when we're talking about GLM effect coding and how all these numbers are related under the same umbrella model. So we could do a lot more, but I'll stop right there for now, and we'll get into more detail in future videos. So that wraps up this video on effect coding in ANCOVA and regression. So I hope you were able to see how this works, how we interpret the coefficients, and why in some ways I think that this is actually an easier interpretation as it references the overall grand mean, and we can see the effects of each of the groups relative to each other a bit easier. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.